Welcome to Wednesday Night is Business Night at the Simsbury Public Library. I'm Jennifer Cohane, the Business Outreach Librarian at the Simsbury Public Library. Our Wednesday Night series has been going strong for almost 10 years and is an important part of the services offered by the library's Business Resource Center. Our programs are free of charge, open to the public, and meant to provide current educational information for job seekers, people looking to start businesses, existing businesses, investors, and even those looking for college and career preparation. Almost every Wednesday evening from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m., you'll find the library's program room abuzz with folks looking to find expert information and answers to issues in their professional life. The programs feature local business experts and cover startup basics like legal issues or how to select accounting software, to more complex and current topics like how to use social media to, print out, to promote your business. We're grateful to the Simsbury Community Television volunteers who tape these presentations so you can access some of the valuable information our live audience was able to obtain. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Now, physically, where does the nail enter, right? Where does the nail come in? Now, in a home, you guys want to avoid having all the mail end up on the kitchen table or the dining room table. And in order to do that, you need to think about what door does the mail come in? And right there, right at that door, you need to try to create a mail drop. So you want to catch it before it comes in and gets to the counter. If you're designing a home in the future, make sure you design a mail drop <laughs> into your house. Um, and you want to have an inbox or an in-basket for each person. And I brought some pictures. So this is cubbies with an in-basket, an example of a mail drop where you might have an in-basket for each person. If you have room near the door, if you have shelves um, or you can put baskets on shelves, but if you don't have room for shelves and baskets or something like this, you at least have a wall and you could put wall pockets up, right? So worst case scenario, you have no floor space, you can't put shelves in, you can't put baskets in, but you can put wall pockets up, one for each person. This is an example of a wall pocket. Some people say, what, what is a wall pocket, right? You can pass these on. Um, uh, professional organizers are on Post-its mailing list, and Post-its just sent us this new product, which is a pocket that sticks to the wall. Now, this won't hold a lot, but it will hold a little bit of paper. It's a new Post-it product. Pass it around. So, the most important thing with capturing your mail, so you avoid the mail piles, is just try to, try to put a drop somewhere near where the mail enters the house. And we're not just talking about mail, we're also talking about maybe children's school papers that they bring home. You could put three little baskets uh, down low if you have three children put one for each child. So this is before you get a chance to address it so that it's just not on your table. So your bills. You don't necessarily want your bills to end up in a, in a big pile because that can create a lot of financial problems. And for your bills, we can, we can set up a template file. So you might have heard about tickler files, which some people use a dated file folders, which are 1 through 31, right? But another way you can set up a bill tickler file, which is um, simpler, is something like this. So in a basket, you can open up your bills when you get them, toss out the extra stuff, and here's an example. This date which is, you can, can you see that? 222. Okay, so here's the bill. Here's where the stamp would go. And this date, written large enough so that you can see it at home, you see that? Is the date you want to mail that bill. So this is a system that's worked with a few of my clients. They think it's simple. 
And then in the back, there's, here's 222, there's 227. So that if you leave this basket someplace where you walk by it or you can see it frequently, then you're going to know, oh, 222, that's the next time I have to mail a bill. Can you comment if you pay most of your bills electronically? If you pay most of your bills electronically, they still might have due dates. True. And so, right, so if you... If you get them through email and you get the e-bill, that's going to be a reminder in itself. Right. I, right in what I email. usually do is I get the bill in the mail. Yep. So I pay it electronically. Mm -hmm. And I'm having trouble making sure it's paid on time. Yeah. So you could put these. You can just put the envelope or the bill. You could still put a small basket with your bills next to your PC. And this would be a reminder. That's one way you could do it. If you have a good calendar system, you could write um, your pay this bill in your calendars. That's another way to do it. If you have a calendar system where you, that your life is in, that you feel this is my life, and you rely on it and it works for you, you can write everything in your calendar. Pay the electric bill, you know, mail, mail the car payment. Um, this is just one physical way to create a tickler file. And before we talk about the desktop, one other thing you need where your mail comes in the door, um, or two other things, are you need a shredder there and you need a recycle bin. Right? So if you can catch that junk mail, put it in the recycle bin, and shred things right away, that's, that's another barrier to having that paper come further into your home where you don't, where you don't want to see the mess. All right, the desktop. The most important thing for your desktop is that you have a traffic flow, right? You need an inbox. I, I'm really surprised when I see desks without inboxes, but, it, but it's common. A lot of people just have piles all over their desks. They say, I know where everything is. But the inbox serves a couple of purposes. One, if you work with other people, they need to know where should I put things when you're not here. They don't want to put things somewhere on your desk. They don't want to put things on your chair. They need to know where shall I put something that you're going to know where it is. It's going to be a safe place. So an inbox is for other people that you work with. The other purpose of the inbox is for things that you haven't addressed. It's not a to-do pile, right? It's not a to-do pile. So reserve your inbox for things that you haven't addressed yet, things I haven't looked at, right? It's not your to-do list. You also need on your desk an elevated vertical file. And this is going to be for active and pending projects. This is a simple little thing. This is the kind you need that is elevated, not the flat kind. I'll pass this around. And the reason why this is important that it's elevated is because when you put your file folders in, you can see all the labels, even the ones behind. Don't get the kind like this, that go like this, sideways, because you can't read your file folders when they're this way like this, and elevate it. These things are inexpensive. They're all over the place. Elevated vertical files. And when I say active and pending projects, um, oh, here's an example. So here's the inbox. Some people like an outbox as well. But an inbox for things you haven't addressed yet, that's a black one, it's hard to see in this folder, in this, in this photo, in an outbox. But here's an elevated vertical file on the desk, and this is your to-do pile. These are your active projects. Because you don't want to file your active projects, that's why you have piles all over the, all over the desk, right? Because you're, most of you are outies, you want to have your stuff out. You certainly don't want to file it because you're afraid you lose it. You have a lot to do. So 
so you you make piles right and these are the answers to turning those piles into uh, into files or a safe place where you're going to know what you have to do you can have many of these on your desk or in your office mm -hmm. um, since um, in a typical uh, vertical and visible file system it appears that there are one, uh, three, or four, or five um, levels. Would one label these levels? Um, in any sort of yeah, he's asking about labels. Labels, and I'll talk a little bit more about labels later. But labels is a very personal thing, right? I because you might have, um, if you just have a few active projects. So suppose you have a total of ten. You could use one vertical file holder, and you could prioritize them. The hot stuff in the front, the lower stuff, lower priority stuff in the back. If you have many, many active projects, you might have one holder for work, one holder for home, one holder for school. So you might have multiple vertical file holders for the different parts of your life. You also might prioritize differently. When I was working with a principal who used to be a math teacher, I said, how do you think about priorities, right? Because me, I think about priorities high, medium, and low. That's just me, but that's not right, you know? I said, how do you think about priorities? Um, he said, well, uh, I said, do you, you know, red, yellow, green, high, medium, or low, A, B, C, one, two, three. He said, numbers. He used to be a math teacher, right? So I said, okay, so when we prioritized his active projects, all I had to do was say, what's this, a one through five? This is a one or a five? What's this, one through five? And that worked for him because he was a math teacher, he responded to numbers, and um, he had a great big credenza in his office. He was a principal. So he had five of these, he decided I'm gonna have five of these, one through five, and not one, two, three, but one, one through five. And then he had his, all his hot stuff was in his number one file. So would you label these? Yeah, you would label these. You would label these um, with words or numbers or letters or colors that are intuitive to you. You might, if you are a color person, you might make a green folder for money. You might make a red folder for your really hot stuff. You might think about um, you might think about your business papers one way, your home papers another way. Now I can't give you the right way that's going to work for you, right? If you like colors? Do different colors for different priorities or for different to signify different categories in your life. If you like numbers? Label them one through five or one through ten, right? If you like letters, make them alphabetical. So uh, priorities are a personal thing, right? I probably can't even think of all the ways you might prioritize or words that might come into your, into your mind. Somebody might say, stuff I got to do, right? <coughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. There's no right label. That's the important thing about labels, is that they're intuitive to you, that they're your words and your, your system. <coughs> Priorities. Some clients, um, if you have a lot of horizontal space and you have space for a, a big table like this in your room or your office, you can spread things out. You can you can lay all your folders out. But because I'm, I'm assuming a lot of you are, are outies and you want your stuff to be seen, this is a compact way to fit a lot of files into a small space and still have it out. All right? But if you have a lot of room, by all means, go to town. Spread them out. Yep. Any suggestions if you have very, very little room, especially if you're an Audi? Yeah, if you have little room, you you need to go up. 
So you need to look up and see, use your walls as much as possible. Usually around the top of an office, there's room for another shelf. So you need to go up, not spread out, but um, if the room is small, you need shelves, you know, floor to ceiling. You need to go up as, as much as you can. All right, but this is, this is a pretty compact way to fit a lot of, a lot of files in. And yet you would label them. It is, you would label them so that you can see what's going on there and be reminded of what you have to do. Linda? Yeah? Hi, I'm not trying to be a pain. Hi. In, in our house, we literally don't have wall space, so we can't go up because it's mostly predominantly windows. So where there isn't windows, there's furniture against the wall. So where there isn't windows, there's furniture against the wall, and is there room uh, underneath the underneath the windows no, for those kind of shelves? Yeah, so I don't know, I would have to see the space, but if you have a big open room, you might create shelving or an island somewhere in the middle of the room. You don't just need to use the walls, but think about how can you divide that space or create something like an island or you know a storage island somewhere else in the room. Come out, make an L, make a counter. More like a as a design, or a storage design. So, what are active projects? I, mean, I told you your inbox is not for your active projects, right? Which sometimes that's what people do. When yeah. it comes to the inbox, is that things that quote belong to the whole household or the whole office? I, I mean, it's not clear what is the. It, I get an intimation of what you're saying, but mm -hmm. what uh, is stuff that mail comes in, or I brought this home, I want someone to see it, then you put a name on it, or do you put a, put a topic on the top so that people know why they're looking at it? Well, I don't when know we were just... talking about mail, I said one inbox for each person, right? So when we're talking about mail and paper that's just coming into the house, right, that you haven't addressed yet, a, cat, a place to catch it, before it moves into the dining room table or the kitchen. I talked about one catch-all for each person for each. because that would be uh, that would be ideal. Now that's stuff yes. that hasn't really been addressed yet. Well what what about the mutual items? <laughs> well what about the mutual items? You could have you could have another one. Ours. Yours, mine, ours. Okay. Right? But Thank an you. inbox, this inbox I'm specifically talking about on top of your desk or his desk, or her desk, right? Or your child's desk. So I'm talking about a desk, even if it's both, even if you share the desk. I'm talking about the stuff that's coming in. If you both share the desk, you might, you might have a two-layered inbox yeah. and say, you know, his, hers, right? An inbox for his, on the desk. So this inbox, I'm talking about a desktop inbox. Um, if you have a small business, usually it's just your desk. And But if two people are using that desk, you could have, instead of in and out, you know, you could have John and Mary or Thank three you. tiers. So you could have an inbox. It's for things that you have decided go to the desk that need their, you know, their, back, back you've the addressed the file. mail, the magazines went somewhere else, right? The coupons. It is to be yes. acted on or determined where to file. Yeah, now these things you decided came to need to go to the desk. Mm -hmm. Not on the kitchen table, but to the desk and to the inbox, ideally. So what are active projects, right? They're not staying in the inbox, but you don't want to file them away. So there are things you don't want to file because you need to do something with them. Whether it's pending, waiting on someone else, um, so there are either things that you need to take action with. I have to do this. I have to do this today. I have to do this tomorrow. I have to do this next week. Or there are things that could be pending. So a lot of times when you're in an office situation, you can't file it away, but you're waiting for someone else. So it's really important to have a pending folder. And in that vertical file is the perfect place for a pending folder. Or your words might not be pending. Your words might be waiting for someone else, right? Or follow up on this in a week. So whatever words you like, 
but if you're waiting for someone else, if something's pending or, or coming up in the future, you could have a, a folder for that. So an active project is just something you don't want to file because you have to take action on it sooner or later. Or it's an ongoing project. Maybe it's a writing project. Maybe it's a project for work. Maybe it's a volunteer project. Right? Or it also can be paper you touch a lot. Right? Paper that very inconvenient to put this away because I'm always putting something in this folder. Stuff for my accountant, right? Paper for my accountant, for my taxes. Okay? Here's some examples of active folders that could go um, in, on your desk in that vertical file. Current receipts, 2010 receipts. I like to keep mine. I, I'm certainly not going to go open a file drawer every time I want to put a 2010 business receipt in there, which is every day, right? Almost every day when I come home. So I keep my 2010 receipt folder right on my desk. So every time I go to my PC and I bring my little receipts there, I log them in almost every day, and then I put them in that folder. So save for the account, you might call that. I call it 2010 receipts. You might call it tax for taxes, right? And where are you holding these receipts before you put them in your computer? Before I put them in my computer? Well, the first thing they do, they go in my inbox first. Okay. Right? So I go upstairs. If I don't have time, if I'm not going to log on and log them into my spreadsheet right away, um, they go in my inbox before they go in my 2010 receipts. But you might do it the reverse. So you might have a folder that says receipts to enter, right? Because if you're lucky enough to have an admin, right, or virtual assistant or, or an assistant, you might have a folder instead of your inbox. I don't have an assistant. But instead of your inbox, you might have a folder that says receipts to enter. Right? So that would be a to-do project. You might have a writing project, like I said. Contacts to enter. A lot of you, I see a lot of you at networking events. We're collecting business cards every day, right? And um, I don't know what you guys do with those business cards when you get them home, right? So business cards. It's another thing that you could um, either take up to your desk and put in your inbox, or you can have a folder that says, <laughs> You can have a folder that says contacts to enter, or business cards to enter, right? Or leads to follow up on. Whatever words work for you. So you can create a folder for those business cards because they're a to do. But my advice to you, if you are in a business and you collect those cards, is to try to put, <coughs> if you're going to bring home three or four a day, to try to put in three or four a day into your contact management system. You know what I mean when I say contact management system? No? So contact management system can be, uh, it can be purchase software where you can keep track of all your contacts and their information, or it can be as simple as a, an Excel spreadsheet or a Word table. So it can be um, any online document, or some people still might, it used to be a Rolodex, right? But now, it used to be a Rolodex. But now it would be an online file or a contact management system. And an Excel spreadsheet would work fine for that. But you might have something more sophisticated. Um, my advice would be to put in a few every day. Put them in as you get them. And the reason why is because if you go, you pick up that business card in the morning and you get home at 4 o'clock, if you enter it then, you're going to remember that person and the notes you want to write. Oh, I met them at the Avon Chamber meeting. They said, you know, they had um, a husband who was really messy. <laughs> or they wanted, they asked me to call them if I have a paper workshop. So um, you can, if you, if you put them in every day when you get them, they don't pile up. They don't turn into a big project. And um, it's, you remember the important thing about that contact or that lead, right? You might have a work project or just uh, something that you call a to-do folder. And um, 
here's where your priorities might come into play. You might have a to-do high priority or a to-do low priority. So um, questions about active projects and what you might keep not in your inbox but on your desk in that, in that vertical file. You get the idea? All right, so you should feel relieved because I'm telling you, you don't have to file those things. They don't have to, you know, they don't have to go in a file drawer. What yeah. if, what if um, is there ever, and I'm assuming there's a point where you have to clean it out at some point, or you have too many active projects that are, have just been sitting for months, maybe? <laughs> well, it's, you can see if you have too many, and then that's a visual trigger that you need to prioritize. If you have too many active projects, and I, I know um, that there are people in this room with too many active projects, if you have too many active projects, then it's a matter of time management issue. Stepping back, reflecting, what's important to you, how am I spending my time, how do I prioritize these things, these projects, so that I'm working on the projects that I value. I'm spending my time, and I toss and say no to the projects that uh, don't add value to my life, that don't match my values. So that's a time management issue, an important time management issue. Step back, you reflect. You have to step back. What's important to me? Right? What's important to me? How am I spending my time? Do they match? That's important. And that'll help you prioritize what you spend your time on so that you're spending your time on things that you value and not the time wasters and the things that drain you. If you want to try not to spend your time on the things that, that drain you, but the things that replenish you. Right. Yes. And it sounds like your implied message is that you don't want to then file away things I hope I maybe will do someday, you know, if they're low priority, make the decision to get them out of your way and out of your life. Well, sure. Things I hope I make. Well, if it's a dream, if it's an important dream, mm -hmm. thing I hope I really would love to do someday. Right. If it's an important dream, you know, you can keep it out. Yeah. But if it's a low priority, things that realistically I'm never going to get to this. Yeah. You can reflect on that and say maybe that's something I can let go because I really am spending my time the way I want to on things that are important to me and these things over time are not as important as I thought. Realistically, I'm not going to have the, you know, the hour to spend on that. So you can keep them in a low priority or weed them out. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just give you another time management tip, even though we're not talking about time management. There's no such thing as spare time. You need to schedule everything. So get a calendar system that works for you. And if you want to, if you really want to do that thing that someday I'm going to get to, write it in your calendar. If there's no room in your calendar, there's no room to do that thing. On your desktop. The thing that is okay to be on your desktop are the things that you're going to do today. Right? So not 10 piles, because you're not going to do 10 piles of stuff today. Your active projects are going to be in your vertical files. But it's OK to keep the things I'm going to do today right on your desktop. Right? That makes sense. And um, you can add a to be filed bin uh, to your desktop. Either it can be on your desktop, or it can be on top of the file cabinet. You have files because you guys are not great filers. You don't like to file. And a lot of people don't like to file. If you're lucky enough to have an admin, delegate your, your filing. That would be great. But otherwise, it is easier if you do, when you pick up this paper and you know what it is, to file it a little bit at a time. And I'm going to talk about filing next after desktop. But um, it is easier to do a little bit at a time than when you have a big pile. But I'll, I'll talk to you about how to get rid of that big pile. So in, while, you're, uh, while you're waiting to file that stuff, you need a place for it. It's not another pile. It's 
not your inbox, right? We know it's not your inbox because your traffic flow now is in, right? My inbox, my active projects, today I'm doing this, and maybe over there to be filed. So there's the flow, right? Left to right. You can do right to left if you want. <laughs> but um, that's the flow. And then to be filed. So that your to be filed stuff is not mixed in with your inbox, remember? Because there's a lot of stuff in your inbox now, or in your in pile now, that's just filing. You don't have to act on it. It's not an active project. Right? You're going to toss it or shred it or file it because you want to keep it. So you don't need to get that to be filed stuff once you decide, I'm going to file that, but not, not right now. Just get it out of your inbox. So you can transform your office. Here's a messy office. No inbox, no active file holders, sorting on the floor. This is maybe trash. Maybe this is something. That's <laughs> A big improvement. It's a lot more space than I have. Right. My wife has that. Right. And then the papers are just have been given a home. That's all. The papers have just been given a home. So inbox would be here. Active projects. Here, things to do. Well, this file cabinet was painted to match the other one. Makes a big difference. Spray paint, right? Three dollar can of spray paint. Makes a difference. Big difference, huh? Um, and then things were actually filed. Things were actually filed. But the, the big difference here is the inbox and active projects. Well, let's talk about files. Yeah. Do you don't prefer the inbox to also be vertical? The inbox can be vertical. Just throw stuff in there vertically. Well, it just seems like if it's flat and everything's stacked on top of each other, then you got to like go uh, which one ends there, which one begins the next one, whatever. And vertical, maybe you could do it separated better. <coughs> Separate your inbox. Well, your inbox is stuff that you haven't sorted yet, that you haven't looked at yet. It's just a pile. So your inbox is going to be just a pile. This is stuff that you sorted, so it's going to go in vertical, vertical files. There's not a lot of projects on this desk, but you know, like I said, there could be multiple holders like this for the different categories in your life. Okay, so the inbox has two labels, and what are they? This inbox has in and out. So out would be um, stuff that, I, that you're mailing, stuff that you're giving to somebody else, right. right? But we said if you share your desk with someone, the inbox could say, you know, his and hers. If you like, you know, I don't like multiple layered inboxes because this bottom part usually turns into a black hole. So I like one in basket. It's just, you know, stuff you have in your dress. Yeah? I think that docu pocket would do fine for what he's saying is a vertical file. I mean, it still is an inbox. The thing you have in the center on the floor there? Oh, this wall basket. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Something if like you don't that. have desk space, um, you could put these could be great inboxes. Okay, so if you are in an office environment where people interrupt you all the time, it's great to put this outside your door. Because if you're a friendly person, you're a creative people person, people are going to come in, they're going to start talking to you, interrupting you all the day, that's a time management tip. That if you're in an office environment where you get interrupted a lot, put an in box, an in-basket, a vertical one, like this, outside your door. Can, uh, can children be trained to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm 
I'm still working on that. <laughs> if you have a home office and um, you know you put one of these outside, this helps with t interruption. It helps you with your time management. Right? So you might be able to even close your door and people will be able to give you stuff. If your door is closed and you don't have an in, right, they're going to knock on your door. Where am I going to put it? I can't leave it on the floor. So these are um, really good tools to put outside your office door. I've seen that kind of thing with a magnet on the back that could go on the side of the fridge or on the side of a file cabinet for to file, yeah. for instance. Yeah. Or for you your inbox. Depending. Yeah. These are great because, well, I see through because they're see through. And, um, you know, these are great because they don't take up space like a filing cabinet does. Yeah? We have, we have mostly an open office, but there is one woman who has a, a cubby. And she has hers labeled. And so we do her sorting for her. If it's to be scanned, it goes here. If it's literature that has to be sent out, it has a different, you know, she's got them all labeled so that we sort her in basket for her, pretty much. So it she has actually very, very well. And she knows that way she knows which ones are higher priority. So isn't she smart? She's delegating her, her <laughs> sorting. She's delegating her sorting. Yes. So she has multiple in boxes outside her door? Or on, the, on, her, um, on her wall? On her walls outside her right. entryway. That's Maybe delegation. Yeah, right? So she's saying different <coughs> stuff goes in different boxes. Right? And uh, actually, I did have a client who had like an uh, inbox for a client, a lawyer who had inbox for client related items, inbox for personal, right? inbox for maybe um, business, literature. So you can train your assistants to sort for you. So before you create filing systems, I want you to think again about whether you're an any or an out. Do you really do you really want your office to look neat and have everything away behind drawers? Do you think you're going to use your file a file cabinet? Think you'll use that? Are you an any? Will that make you happy? Or are you an Audi where you're just going to really have anxiety if you file anything in a, in a file cabinet, right? So think about yourself. You like things put away? Do you need an open filing system? And I brought one to show you. Roll this around. There's this in person. And um, these are great little things because this one in particular can be used for legal size or letter size by just by moving the bar. So you can have it all, all legal, all letter. If you like colors, you can use different color folders for different topics. You can have multiple rolling carts like this. You can move it anywhere you want. Um, they come in different sizes. I've seen them much taller. I've seen them, you know, they come in this height. They come with um, locked tops that you can lock at night. So if you want to use this in an office and you're filing uh, personnel or confidential items, you can still get them so they're open all day for you and you can lock them at night. So this is an example, you guys can roll it down or do whatever you want with it. Um, it's an example of an open filing system. How much, how much should something like that cost? Well, right now, I, those are about $50 in Ocean State job lot when they have them, but under $100. A real fancy one with a lock might be a little more, might be you know, 150 and this is, you use that before you put it in a real filing system. No, this, this, is, this is your filing system. system. This is oh, your filing system. My files, I, I would have so many. Just, I mean, that would just probably do for a day. All right, well, we'll talk about, let's talk, we'll yeah. talk about what's not, going to be I'm handy. Not. There's a big difference between what you're filing and you want to be handy, that you touch a lot, yes. right, and archive files. That's a big, there's a big difference between those. Right? So another example of an open filing system would be um, 
the kind that doctors have for medical files, which are open during the day, close at night, those large laterals. You open them up. They're nice and open so you can see what's going on during the day. So doctor's offices, those are expensive, but they're another example of an open system. Another example of open storage, if we're not talking about files, would be um, open cubbies with baskets, something like that, right? So if you're storing other things, you might think about open cubbies with, um, with baskets in them. All right, so there's a difference between files that are referenced that you're going to touch a lot and things that are archived. So, so reference by reference, I mean, you want to have it handy. You really think, I can't put this far away because I use it frequently, several times a week. And um, it's a reference item for you, so you want to be able to touch it. It goes in prime real estate if it's something that you touch a lot, right? It's just, just functional. If, if you're going to use something a lot, you want it near. It's just like having a, um, an activity zone in your workshop. Where this is where all my woodworking supplies are. Everything handy. So things that you're going to touch a lot during the course of your work, you want to have handy. Um, you need to think about what the major categories of your filing system are. And again, there's not a right way to, um, to create categories or a wrong way. Right? One way would be business and personal. Another way might be stuff that uh, you know, I do for fun and stuff that's more serious. Another way might be financial or, you know, I don't know. So every one of you would think of different major categories. So you need to ask yourself, how do I think about all this paper? How do I think about these things? What's here? And when you look at your pile, you might know, because you have a lot of piles, right, on your desk, and you might know intuitively. If I said to you, what's in this pile? You would say, well, that's my, uh, that's my writing project. What's in this pile? That's stuff I gotta file. What's in this pile? Oh, that's the kids, that's the kids' score. What's in this pile? Oh, right, those are, um, those are things I have to do, I'm just never gonna get, I just wanna keep those. So you might have a gut feel for how you've sorted those piles. Maybe not, but, but you might. You might have a gut feel. So it starts to tell you what are the categories in your life, right? What are your hobbies? I was going to say, you really know how to define them if someone says, well, let's throw it out then. And then all of a sudden, you know, no, no, I need this for this. No, no, I need that. So, how do you avoid over-organizing? Because, like, with my files, I have a file, and then I have subcategories. And then I put things away, and then I can't remember where I put them. You can't remember where you put them. All right. And that is a question of labels. It's on one of the next slides. Well, I'll talk about labels now, since you asked. You can't remember where you put things. I mean, it's, you know, like... Mm -hmm. I'll make a list, and then I have lists of lists, mm -hmm. and then it just gets out of hand. <laughs> All right, so you start at the top. You start with what are the major categories in my life, and try to separate into major categories, which um, some, some people have a hard time with that. That's what you want. You want to try to start at the top, not with a thousand little categories. You want to try to say what are the major chunks, chunk it, big chunks, you know, like my business, travel, my hobby, personal, medical. Try to think of some big chunks, but the labels that you should put on your files are labels that are intuitive to you, and I'm, this is what I mean by that. A month from now, when you are going to look for this thing, 
what word is going to come into your mind two months from now? That's what you have to ask yourself before you write the label. Not, oh, what is the right label for this? But a month or two from now, when I need to find this, what word is going to come into my mind? That's the right label. Right? It's not my list of labels. It's not your husband's or your wife's list of labels. My husband, we share tools. Well, we don't share tools anymore. <laughs> but we, you know, we have tools. We have tools in the house. And he has a beautiful tool cabinet that he inherited from his grandfather with all those little drawers. Is, he, is, he, is he a woodworker? Well, yeah, well, among other things. Yeah. <laughs> and it has labels. And there's stuff in there, you know, like tape, glue, hammer. Right? And I want them alphabetized. <laughs> not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. I had to get my own tools. I had to get my own toolbox. I had to get my own tools and hide them because he stores them by frequency of use. Makes sense for him. We can't share that filing system. I had to get my own tools. So you have to divide and conquer sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes at work we put a picture of the thing on the outside or even a sample of the thing. You just tape it to the wherever it is. Yeah, so really good idea, especially for children. I've seen that in a rental house, which could sleep up to 24 people, so you can imagine the kitchen. And they had a photo inside each of the cupboards for oh. all the kitchenware. Yeah. But what, whether it's for kids or for whatever else your a photo is. Or the actual item, you know, like they do at Home Depot, you can see the screw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is where the screws are. This is where you can see the actual picture of the thing. So photos would work. If you guys like photos, you could put photos. You know, <clears throat> women do that. They take photos of the shoes and put them on the outside of their shoe boxes. So photos would work. But an important, an, an important thing to remember with label is not what should. Because people say to me, what should I label this folder? I don't know what you should label that folder. A month from now, when you're looking for this thing, what word is going to come to your mind? Because I don't, I don't use the same words that you do. I'm uh, wrestling with that myself. And she says she has a topic, then all the sub uh, things. And I, for instance, family. And then I have family this and family that and family the other thing. And then I think, figured that I maybe use that in, as a category and then subsets within it. So I'm not looking for uh, trips with the family, family trips. No, they'll all be under trips. But within that family that I will have subsets that I, that I think of. But again, it, it, you have to discipline yourself to an organization and if it helps to make a list of what you just did. <laughs> Some people do have an index, a table of contents yeah, for their yeah, files. Yeah. Right? Some people have a table of contents. You can have too many lists. If you're trying to do a quick sort, you could say family. And then your second level sort is after you've got everything sorted and family is your big chunk, then go back and you could, you could sub subset. subset if you have time. You can have too many. So if you start at the top and work your way down gradually, um, that could help. Refine it. Right. I would definitely keep business and personal separate, though. Yep. Um, isn't it true that most of us keep too much stuff? Like 80% <laughs> of uh, what's in our files is really not necessary. Maybe we should keep the date to get rid of whatever this archive material is that most of it's going to be unnecessary anyway. 80%. Right, so the difference between your files are reference or archive. So you're talking about archive. Yes. Right? If you're not using it a lot, you're not touching it a lot, those are archive files. And archive files can go far away. Don't put them in prime real estate, don't put them in your desk. You're, you know, don't put them in prime real estate. They can go in another room. They can go far away. If you're, if you're just saving them for archiving, they don't need to be in, in prime real estate. They can go in copy paper boxes with labels, and you could put, if they're financial papers, things like that, you could put a destroy date on them. Now, a rule of thumb, and you need to check with your accountant, 
is to keep seven years. So current year, six years back. So right now you can throw out 2003 and before. Not deeds, right, to your house. <laughs> Not important legal papers, but just things that supported, you just kept, they supported your tax documents. Seven years is a good rule of thumb. But, but 2003 I, and before? IRS forever. Tax returns forever. Tax, the actual return forever? Yes. The actual return. The return. Not the receipts, just the return. Not the receipts, just the return. Jen, yeah? How are we doing for time? Good. All right. Um, so, and your archive can go, they can go in um, boxes, you know, like copy paper boxes and label them destroy 2004, destroy in, you know, in this year, destroy in that year. Or you could keep them in archive can also go in, um, you know, clear plastic. I would try to put them all in similar containers so that they stack and store well. That's why I said copy paper boxes. If you have dry storage, not one size box for this and one size box for that, but if you can get a bunch of copy paper boxes or, um, you know, several of these boxes that are similar in size so that you can store and stack them. Or those things can go in the dreaded filing cabinet, right? Um, but they don't have to be in prime real estate. Archive stuff. Question? How about scanning something and then just putting it away and just keeping the, the computer scanned? Yeah, that yeah that's ideal. But you guys aren't here because you scan your stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's ideal. <laughs> that's ideal. You can scan your stuff files, but you're here because you have a lot of paper. But scanning, you know, if you have a scanner and you have some time to scan or you have an assistant who can scan, scanning your thing, you still need to come up with labels. In a backup system. Right. <laughs> right, so I mean, you come here and see Joe O'Donnell, he'll tell you it's not a matter of if your hard drive is going to crash, it's a matter of when it's going to crash. So make sure you have a good, um, a good backup system. And one thing that I, if you do come up with a set of labels, um, outline, like an outline or a list that works for you, try to use those same labels for your email folders, your Word online Word folders, and your paper. <coughs> So if, if you spend the time to come up with a labeling system, try to keep consistent with your paper and your online labels. Yeah, one other question about children's artwork. Any recommendations for photographing the precious Photograph and throw it out. She has to throw it out. Children's artwork. Children's artwork. What do you do with that? And um, one approach is to have one plastic storage. One approach is to have one plastic storage bin for each child. And when it gets full, now sometimes it's the parents that can't part with this stuff. But the kids usually, sometimes the kids can. So when it gets full, you can say to your child, this is full. What things do you think we can, um, we can throw out or and what things should we keep? And some children will say, they're not as attached to it. And some children will say, well, we can let that go, we can let that go, because I can draw better now, and that's when I was a baby. But sometimes the parents can't part of it. So try, try to fit it into, give yourself Define a reasonable amount of space, all right? And some people would say, uh, did you say take a picture of it? You could take a picture of the artwork and make a scrapbook, but that's another piece of paper. No, we did, my niece did this great picture of my husband and I. Yeah. She's 15 now, but I, we, um, I printed it on 11 by 17 and laminated it, and um, well, actually now it's the, the, it's the map of the cat's Almost go on. Please, Matt. Please back this up because it was so funny. If you really love something, you know, frame it. If you really love it, honor it and frame it. But I have um, two.
two pieces of artwork from my daughter framed. And one is in my kitchen, and it's, she was five, and it says, my mother, she is not a good cook. <laughs> My mother, she is not a good She is very beautiful. I love her very much. And it's just the most precious thing. So it's in my kitchen. But yeah, if you really love something and it's very precious to you, then frame it. Keep it out. That's a joke. It really is. It really is. So we talked about labels. What word will come to your mind when you're looking for it? That's the right label. Don't let anybody sell you a list of labels. This is the filing system. These are the labels, the right labels to use. No. Um, keep seven years. So right now you can toss 2003 and older. All right. How do you turn those piles into files? Right? We're going to talk about just on that keeping um, the retention. Is there a place that you can go to that list, like for taxes, for receipts, for that, for different things, the number of years, for things? Well, I would try to get that from your account. Jen, would you Oh, that. Is there a place that you can go to get um, retention? Retention, like what really you need to do for taxes, for... Um, Oprah.com. Oprah.com. Oprah. Uh, does a whole thing of what you should uh, Oprah. Oh, okay. She's saying you could find that on Oprah. That's you, Oprah. Your accountant should be able to give that to you. Your accountant should be able to give that to you as well. Oh, Howard. 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 All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, recommendations on what to keep. Probably Martha Stewart has that too. <laughs> For business, you use eight years, like seven years. Seven years plus your tax year. Ask your account. Jen? That's what I was going to say. Besides Oprah and Martha, there's also like the IRS. <laughs> When you set up your, so to sort, you need to work on those piles, you need a place to sort. You need to find some place to sort. You can't do it on a chair, right? I do. <laughs> so he does. And please um, have a recycle bin and a shredding, uh, you know, a shredding container with you. It doesn't have to be a shredder, but, a, you know, a bag for, for shredding. So you need to set up a sorting area. You need space to sort, it's sorted. So here's an example of a sorting area or, or the way we would set up a sorting table during a sorting workshop. And uh, a big folding table is nice, ideal. So in is on the left, and this would be your pile stuff. It can be a small pile, a big pile, but over on the left, this would be Stuff that's coming in, those would be your piles. And you would start sorting by, you would have one side of your table be for active to do stuff. Stuff I have to do. This is where you're going to put active projects. Things you need to do something with. The other side of the table is for things you're going to file. Right? And then there's out things that are going to someone else, right? And here on the bottom, I don't know if you can see, there's a shredding and a recycle bag. That's just getting ready. Getting ready to sort my pile, getting ready to attack it. I need space, you need space, all right? Half the table's gonna be where you put your active projects, half the table's where you're gonna put your filing. You need a little place for out, stuff that you're going to hand to somebody else. And the process. You are, you are going to take one paper at a time, and you have to decide. You have to make a decision, because clutter is postponed decisions. I don't know what I'm doing with this stuff. You have to make a decision. If you really get stuck on a piece of paper, put it in another, put it in a separate pile, right? But this is, you're trying to make fast decisions about things. 
If you get hung up, really hung up on an item, try not to try to just let that item um, go, but try hard to decide on each piece of paper because then you're done with it. The decision, right, about where on the table is it going to go. And the categories will be created as you go. Remember I said there's no right labels. The categories are what pops into your head. So when we're doing this um, with someone, you pick up a piece of paper and I'd say, what's this? I'm not telling you what it is. I'm not saying, oh, this is your financial thing. You better file it with your taxes. Oh, this is medical. It's what's this? You tell me what word it is, right? Those are your categories. And you start labeling them. Now this, again, this is the active to do side of the table. Active to do. The in pile was over here. And you can start creating large categories. This, these categories are business versus personal. Stuff to do related to the business. Stuff to do related to personal. If you, you can do this any way you want. If you don't want to write on the piece of paper, you can use lots of stickies. Here's a show that's coming up March 1st. Have to do something with it, have to do some publicity. If you don't want to, if you're okay <coughs> writing on the piece of paper, write on it what it is. Here's a contact. Here's information about a laptop. Here's a lunch receipt. So. Write on it large enough so that you can see, so that you do not have to pick up the piece of paper again and study it again, right? So because otherwise you're going to have, if you don't label these, you're going to have to pick up that piece of paper again and say, what, what's this? <coughs> so either put a sticky on it or write on it large enough so you can see. And this is not the filing, remember? This is the active to-do side business stuff, if there were personal things to do, right, RSVP, whatever, they, they could go in another category. Your categories might be different. Well, they would be different for sure. Right? Your categories would be whatever your big chunks are, however you think about the things you have to do. So essentially you're saying label as you go. Label as you go. Not just say, create this? categories as you go, but also label each paper in one way or another. Yeah, those are your labels. Categories are the chunks, how you're going to chunk them. And those labels will end up being the labels. Why I'm saying that but the paper itself should have a label on it in case it gets skewed or it's the You can, so this is, a, uh, this is one way to do it. You can, if you want to, right at this point, create a folder for each one, because you're going to create folders for them anyway. You can sort them this way. You need to label them. If you want, you can create a folder for each one at this time. Or you can sort them, do, do a bunch of sorting, and then turn those things into folders. Here's a red folder, high priority stuff. Right? Here's 2010 receipts. That was where that lunch receipt went. Um, contacts to enter, that's where that contact went. To do low priority. <coughs> One reason you might not create folders, I'm, I went backwards, at this point is because you might already have lots of folders for these things in your files. Right? If you already have lots of folders in your files, you don't need to create new folders for them here. You just need labels. Then when you go to file them, you only need to create <coughs> folders for things you don't have folders for. Right? These folders already existed. So, um, you know, this was just a quick sort. Then they went into folders or you create folders for the, for the labels that you don't have folders for. These things now, because they're active projects, go in your desktop vertical file. This is the active side, not the filing side. Right? So these are your active projects. 
They don't go in a file cabinet. These end up on your desk, not in your inbox now, because we just kind of sorted your inbox. They go in your active vertical files. Here's the other side of the desk, which is you don't really have to do anything with it, except it can be filed. You're not going to toss it. You're not going to shred it. Now, your categories might be different. They might be filing for business, filing for personal. Right? You might have another category. You might have, these might be for you, keep near, keep close, archive. Right? So think about how you want to sort your filing. But in the short term, um, here these are sorted by business and personal. 2009 receipts, article ideas. I, you know, keep that kind of handy. Time management, can't read that one. So, article about, you know, time management. Personal. Credit card statements. Insurance for the house. Mom's banking, mom's insurance. General receipts, retirement information, right? So you can put stickies on these or you can write on them, but you're sorting, you're not, you know, filing yet. You're not taking every piece of paper and figuring out where to put it in your filing system. And then out is something here you want to give to Maureen. You want to give the out is for stuff you, for somebody else. Then you're going to turn those sorted papers into labeled file folders, right? When I said your active to-do projects go in the vertical files on your desk. The reference things that you're going to touch a lot go in prime real estate. Prime real estate could be this drawer right here. It could be your open rolling cart. That's prime real estate. It could be this drawer right here in your desk, the drawer, right? That's, that's really handy. Uh, very close by, filing that you want to have really handy. You might like those rolling carts. And then there'll be archive. You're just saving it for some day. It can go farther away. It can go in boxes. It can go in a file cabinet. It can go um, in another room. It can go in another area. And your folders, depending on who you are and what you like, you know, they don't have to be just manila folders. If you think you would be stimulated to file by using pretty folders or colored folders, get folders in the colors you like. Now, they come in all pretty colors now. Now, some people like um, these clear plastic envelopes because they can see, you know, they can see what's in them. Some people like these instead of file folders, then they get tons of these and file these. You, write, you could write on them with a Sharpie. I, I found the uh, pocket files you know. at Staples with project right on the top, printed on the front. Pockets. With, uh, but they're pocket files, but you can write, write on the tab, and then there's a whole list of what you put inside it. Mm -hmm. if you, get that far and order it that way by date or whatever. Yeah, make sure if you do get pocket, um, you know, pockets with sides, that they fit, they're going to fit in the container that you're going to put them in. If you're going to use these or if you're going to use a rolling cart or a file draw, make sure your those pockets are going to fit in the container you have targeted for them. And archiving is just saving for some day. All right, uh, I'm going to take questions, but I want to tell you if you want to follow, if you think you want to do this hands-on, I'm going to be having a hands-on paper sorting workshop where we're going to, for each person, you're going to actually have the sorting table and I'm going to help everybody sort their papers. So if you want, um, either there's a handout in the back of the room or you might have one in your packet. So if you want to do this with a buddy, we can do this together. I mean, Linda's going to take questions. I'm going to take questions. Some of you can get um, evaluation sheets and we've brought it if you let us know other topics you're interested in. I ran out. So if you did get an evaluation sheet and would be willing to fill one out, just leave it in the back of the room. Thank you.
And um, I know some people have to head out. I just um, I just want to make sure we take a minute to thank Linda. So do you guys have questions on any organizing topic? Let's take some of those. Your hand went up first. Um, I have a question on the active to-do. Um, if you have suggestions for an actual to-do list, things that aren't physical but are in your head. And I've been finding I write every day on a post-it note, and then they collect and um, just have all these random post-it notes everywhere. So, so her question is, do I have any advice on to-do lists? List, not physical folders, but to-do list. It's a personal thing. If you have a calendar system that works really well for you, right, a calendar that's big enough so that you can write everything in, schedule everything you have to do on the right day. So that, but um, say I have an hour of time to, to devote to it, there's not enough space to write all the, everything I need to do. So that's why I, I take a bigger piece of paper. Yeah, just maybe your calendar isn't big enough. You might try a larger calendar, a calendar book with a section that has a pad in it, a calendar booklet with a section that has um, lots of blank paper, so that in your calendar you can write what you have to do, but you can have sections for your projects, like a notebook, um, you know, that have everything that's related to it. I use a really big I use a really big eight and a half by eleven calendar. With, yeah, and uh, you know it works for me. I don't like I don't like um, palm, my background is uh, is IT. You know, I was twenty years an IT manager, but I my eyes aren't good enough anymore to read the font on the palm. You know, on on the PDR without on PDA without getting aggravated. Um, I like to write big on kinetic. So I'm okay with it, you know, I have a thing, and there's a lot of space in there. There's, there's pockets in there for things I need to carry around. There's room for a pad. There's sections for different projects. There's a section for uh, contacts. There's a section when I'm with a client. There's a section for resources, you know, donation resources. So um, to-do lists. If you have a big enough calendar, that might work for you. I have a client who's a musician. And she loves three by five cards. And I think she likes them because they look like little staffs, little music staffs. And she uses these for her to-do list, three by five cards. And every day she sorts them and prioritizes them and plucks the one she wants. And it works for her. She loves her three by five cards. She keeps an elastic around them. They even have nice little three by five card holders, like coupon envelopes, coupon books. So whatever works for you, if you like gadgets, you know, you like, some people keep everything on their electronic devices. Yeah, question? Uh, Linda, we've, I've talked a little bit about business cards. Uh, and I know we all get business cards. I'm in the travel business, and sometimes I'll go to a show, and I get 100 business cards. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't have time to put them in my database, nor would I want to put all of them. So as a result, I end up with drawers full of business cards. And I mean, the other day, I put them all in a big box, and I'm not even sure what to do with them now. But I mean, how do you handle, or how do you suggest that people handle big business cards? Do you have an, an online system or a system where you capture the things that you want, your contacts that you want to follow up with? We what do you do? We have a database. You have a database. Our active suppliers right. and customers. So I think the clue in your sentence is that I wouldn't even want to put these in my database. I would throw them out. <laughs> but if it's someone you may want to... Uh, yeah, you don't think you could find them again? Someone you may want to someday... <laughs> I would, if you either put it, make it, so that's a decision. I have some that I use. All right, remember when we said decide? Remember when we said decide? Decide on this piece of paper? So I would say either deci decide on, on the card. Either put it in because you want to keep it or throw it out. 
now you have a box of cards that you're, you can't find anything in that box because there's so many cards. So decide, this is a contact I want in my database or throw it out. And once you put it in the database, throw the card out. There, there are devices that will scan business cards. And that's true. And, and put them in that's true. Oh, but if they're they people in a place where you met the person to. If you if you think oh, I wouldn't even want to put these uh, you oh, know, not because, for uh, I would you know, you can throw them out, you can throw out business cards. I enter mine and throw them out. I, I know where you can. I bought a binder at Staples <laughs> and they have plastic sheets that have yeah, they two, three mm -hmm. columns yeah, with the cards good. and it's a really thin binder and I have it organized by possible, maybe or just reference and it takes up that much room but it's worth having I've used it. So her words, her words for her cards, her categories, her chunks were possible, maybe. And what's the other one? Uh, yeah. Reference. Reference. One was reference. One was reference. possible. And right. So she sort of she made a decision. Right. I'm going to keep these. Was her first decision, and she sorted them into. So your database. It sounds like you're using for hot, active, active contacts. My vendors. Right. My hot leads. So you might sort them. Even if you don't put them in those little slots, you might sort them into, they have beautiful, Cargo makes beautiful card holders um, about, that would hold a thousand business cards, and they're very pretty. They have labels in the front. I wish I brought a picture of those. And um, they're very handsome. You might have different boxes for, you know, for maybe, possible lead, I don't think you're ever going to get to them. Though. <laughs> <laughs> you can also, and I, I often do make notes on the back of the phone now so I know where I met the person and why or whatever. But you can put your dates in here so that if you do go through the box, it's five years old, and never, it might be good if She puts, she so puts the notes on the back of her card. And those are the kind of notes that if you do key the contact into your system, you could just put a note. Um, into your system. Another question? Um, since I last went to the seminar forum the last month, I started to implementing and bought the vertical folder. Yeah, you bought a vertical yeah. folder? Yeah, so I, I didn't you know how to organize like I didn't think it before I went to the seminar. So I tried to tackle home and work, and I realized that one thing I was going to say you the time management part because <laughs> I forgot you had to manage it. It's awesome. So it looks really good at the beginning until I can manage it. Um, uh, someone had told me to take everything out, like all the boxes out. I mean, take all the papers and, you know, then take one day and then sort them and so forth. And so kind of how to start, how to attack it. No, well, no, we do have shown me how to attack it, but yeah. it was like overwhelming. So then it's over one thing for work, so I have one paper and work paper, so yeah. I stopped and started doing a little bit at a time. But she got overwhelmed with all her papers. She thought she had an idea, home versus work. Then she got overwhelmed because there was too much of it. So start with your most current stuff. Don't start with the stuff that's 10 years old. Start with your most current stuff. Because that's going to be, that's the important stuff too, right? Because that, those are the leads you have to follow up on, the bills you have to pay. So start with a pile that's your most current stuff. And um, if you're overwhelmed with that pile, say, today I'm just going to work on five pieces of paper. Break it down to a number that you, you think I can do that. Because if you get a pile and you're stuck because you're overwhelmed with that pile, right? Break it down into a small enough unit where you feel, I can do that. Whether it's an inch or whether your unit is 10 minutes or whether your unit is two pieces of paper. Think about, you know, just keep breaking it down into a small enough unit where you say, okay, I can do that. Once you get started, you'll keep going. But you can set a timer. A lot of people like to set a timer. They say, I'm going to set a timer. How are we doing for time, by the way? We're fine. We're fine. Any questions? I just want to make an observation. Years ago, when I had five daughters and uh, they were young, we had the same question about what to do with the school things and, and letters and so forth. They sent home from camp or wherever they were going. And they, they traveled as they got older in high school. But after they were all married, as they got married, 
I, I kept all these things, and I, I just picked them up as I see them around the house. I just take them up to my room. I had an 11 by 17 envelope recently, and I just take and tuck it in an envelope. There wasn't any master plan here. It was just an envelope, throw it in there. And I never realized the importance of all of that until after they were married, and one Christmas I put them all in, I said, I'm going to get, I, they took up a whole dresser drawer of mine, and I said, well, I'm going to give them to the kids and see what they think. You know? So I put them all in, in Christmas wrapping and so forth for Christmas, and they all got home for like once in a while. And I gave them out, and the, all of them were absolutely stunned by it. That was the thing that they had given, and, and the letters they had written and so forth. It's a wonderful present if you think of it soon enough to uh, pass on to your children. And you didn't save drawers and drawers and boxes and boxes. Of it. You dresser. saved one dresser drawer, um, one uh, 11 by 14 envelope for each child, and then gave them to them when they were yeah. adults. It had lots of stuff in it. And, yeah. uh, uh, and I think it had almost everything in it. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how much will fit in one of these large yeah. size envelopes. So, so define a space that you think is reasonable for each child and try to stick to that space. Uh, another uh, one more observation. My wife and I operate a business together. Um, I take all the inquiries that come in and numerically numbers them put them in a file folder immediately. She can't stand doing that. She puts them all in a file folder without any numbers on them. There's chaos, in my opinion. She mm -hmm. finds everything. Mm -hmm. But you know, we have, have operated these two different systems, so there are lots of uh, things to do. And the biggest problem is making sure you can try and coordinate with the people around you to, to keep this thing going. Yeah, you have to uh, be patient with the people that you work with and understand that their style is going to be different from yours. You can't force a person into your style. And you have to, you have to be tolerant of their style. And you might want to divide responsibilities so that you're not sharing the same um, incoming or the same inquiries. You're not both doing inquiries. You might divide responsibilities so that you can do your responsibility your way and I'll do mine my way. But don't fight about changing each other. That's just not going to happen. And do innies and outies usually marry each other? Innies and outies kind of usually do marry each other. Yeah, because they balance each other out. I mean, they balance each other out. And, and I just usually say try to divide your space. Hi. Like us who are not that great at organizing the papers, how do we change our habits so that we maintain it? Once we organize it, how do we maintain it? Because I think my desk is over and over and it keeps getting messy. Yeah. So, how do you maintain it? So, if you come up with a filing system that works, then going back to square one, grab the pile and get a sorting, t the sorting table. I would go back to the sorting table. So um, if your desk keeps getting messy, do you have an inbox? Too many inboxes. Too many inboxes. So I guess you might, I, I know that you have a lot of things to do, right? Too many things to do so you're not having the time a, yeah, to do it. Do That's a time yourself, management issue. How do you force yourself to spend the time? That's sort of the question. You can, you can block off the time in your calendar. No such thing as spare time. It's just not going to happen magically. You can, if you're a person who likes routine, you can say, set a timer every morning for 15 minutes. I'm going to start by organizing. You can schedule a half a day a week just to be organized. But if, if that's important to you, you need to prioritize it and, and schedule it. Even if it's just 15 minutes a day, that might work better than a half a day if you think that's more realistic. And then the process would be going back to the sorting process, starting with a pile and, and sorting it. But a little bit a day, maybe, a, maybe you know, 10, 15 minutes a day might work better than trying to find a half a day chunk. Other questions? We're good? Thank you. I hope you've uh, gotten some tips that you can really use. Good luck with your paper.
Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.